Hey loves, I'm back with another YouTube video and today we'll be going over some basic application as well as how I achieved my cow print designs. So for today's video, I'll be using Mia Secret Cover Pink, of course, as well as their clear acrylic and I'm using Afro Glims Monomer. So I'm just going to leave all of those things down below and we're going to jump right into it. So I do always place a very small bead of clear acrylic onto the natural nail before I apply my colored acrylic. Let me know how y'all feeling about this angle because I recorded her other hand but I didn't like it. So I was like let me just record the next hand because this is going to come out nice. But as I was saying I always place a very small bead of clear first and that's just to prevent any staining, any lifting, anything in that category. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I sure did mess up on this first nail. Y'all gonna see me chase this acrylic like I don't even know. And this pretty much had happened because the bead was way too wet. There was too much liquid in my bead and of course this caused it to run completely off the nail. So if this were to happen to you, I really just recommend holding your client's finger down, which you should be already doing, and pretty much fixing the side walls as the acrylic does run off. Or you could wipe it off but I didn't feel like wiping it off. This bead was right in between medium and small and you guys are gonna see that this bead did not run like the last one did and it's just going to allow me to blend it down into the previous bead. I also left enough space on her nail for a cuticle application and what I mean by that is you don't want that area to be too small, then you gotta go in with a really small bead. So I placed my bead and I'm still holding my client's finger down and I'm using the tip of my brush to push the acrylic up into that area. And the bead that I picked up was about a medium wet so it really does just allow the acrylic to flow right into that area. And if I do need to, I'll use the very tip of my brush to go around the cuticle area to clean it just to prevent lifting because we don't do that. For this next nail, I'm still doing the same thing, applying a very small bead of clear acrylic before I apply my colored acrylic. And I know I didn't cap the previous nail, I'm going to cap all these nails in clear after we apply the color. For your application, you want to remember that you always want your acrylic to be on top of the nail as you're starting to bring it down. If it's falling off on the side, bring it right back on top of the nail, hold your client's finger down and continue to bring all of it down very evenly. Also, as you're laying your acrylic, remember that you need the color to be from sidewall to sidewall. So I'm also taking the time to make sure that the acrylic is on the sidewalls completely. And if not, you can always go back and add some more. For this next bead, I'm picking up another small to medium sized bead. And I'm going to make sure that the acrylic is from sidewall to sidewall before I start to blend it down. Now y'all see how I left a nice little area open and available for the cuticle application. It's not too small and it's not too big to where I know that's not no cuticle bead. So once again, I'm holding my client's finger down and I'm going to push the acrylic into the cuticle area. And you don't want to use a dry bead as you're doing this because it's not going to look like the enhancements coming directly out of the nail. Well, out of the matrix. I was so nervous about recording this set because I really wanted this to come out as perfect as possible and I just got this feeling that was like you need to record these. I actually recorded four nail sets that I did today but y'all gotta leave a like and a comment to let me know if y'all trying to see all of them. So 
So for my next three nails, I'll be doing the same three bead method as I'm applying my acrylic. And like I said earlier in the video, I'm not too focused on building an apex right now because we're just applying the color. So for this cuticle application, when I was pushing the acrylic upwards by mistake, I started patting down a little too much, which caused it to be real thin in that area. And you know, thin's okay, we're just applying the color, but this was thin to the point where I felt like if I filed it just a little bit, the color was going to come off. So I did end up going back in with another bead just to make sure that did not happen. Would y'all believe me if I said I did not shape these nail tips at all? I just blended it with her natural nail and flattened the bottom. I'm going to show y'all a video. I was considering doing that next. So y'all let me know down below what y'all want to see. Also, I am using a size 14 crimped brush. I actually got this brush off of eBay. Amazon brushes are just not working for me anymore. I feel like every time I buy an Amazon brush, nowadays something's always wrong with it. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's me, maybe, I don't know. But I've been going right to eBay to buy all of my brushes and I'm gonna link a few good places to buy some brushes down below. Now for the thumb application, I kid you not, I used to hate applying acrylic on the thumbs. I used to feel like they were so big and it just was not possible, but it is very possible of course. And I felt like this application was flawless. I'm still gonna use the same three bead method. Of course, picking up a larger bead for the bottom of the nail. And for the most part, my first bead always covers majority of the nail tip. All right, y'all, so I lied. The application was not perfect. It actually did run off onto the sides. And I feel like this wouldn't have happened if I was pointing her finger down just a little more. But I didn't want to really, like, be yanking on her thumb because it wouldn't go as far down as I wanted it to. But I just simply cleaned up the sidewalls using the very tip of my brush and continuing to make sure that I blended well into that area. 
So I'll now be capping these nails with my clear acrylic and I'm still going to use a three bead method but on some nails I may use four beads and the fourth bead would pretty much be an extra apex bead just in case the first bead was not high enough for me or I wiped some of the acrylic off by mistake. Next for my apex bead, I am going to pick up a medium sized bead and of course I want this acrylic to stay in its place so I am going to remove some of the monomer before applying my acrylic. Also, as you're doing this, make sure that you're constantly checking the side walls of your nails to one, make sure that the acrylic is covering from side wall to side wall and to also make sure that apex is there. Also y'all, please let me know how y'all feel about this angle. I know I've already said it once before, but I really do want to make sure that you guys are all seeing everything. So as we're all here, I did want to thank you guys for 40k. I cannot believe I've only had my YouTube channel for a little over a year now and it's already 40,000 hours. Yes, I'm super excited. It's real late at night right now when I'm doing this. I'm a little lit. I'm in a good mood, but I really do appreciate every single last one of you that do comment, like, all of that. Even to the people that don't and that's just here to watch a quick little tutorial. Y'all cool too. I really do appreciate it. And I did want to know, how would you guys feel about me vlogging? Of course, this wouldn't be on my regular every like Sunday video. This would probably be like in the middle of the week, real random. But I am taking a trip to Houston, Texas in the month of August. And I'm not to say I'm going to be alone, but for the most part, I'll just be, you know, doing my own thing when I'm out there. So I wanted to know if you guys would like to, you know see my reaction to everything i've never been to houston before i'm really just taking a little break for myself now that i've completely finished school state board is over all of that is pretty much over so i'm ready to relax so like i said let me know down below if y'all want to see like you know how everything turns out when i go out there because i'm super super excited like i said i've never been to houston before so we gonna see you know what's out there because i might have to come back a few times and do some nails I do think it would be a very motivational video. I would have never thought that I would be able to just pick up and decide to just go to Houston like so randomly. And like I said, I'm truly thankful. I'm very grateful for every last one of you guys. I definitely would have not made it far without you guys because y'all motivate me. Like my YouTube channel motivates me more than anything because you know, you guys reach out to me and you know, hit me up with your problems and issues. And this just makes me think about you know, back when I was having the same issues or even if the issues that you're having are similar to some that I've faced before or, you know, I'm currently facing, it really, you know, motivates me a lot. So I would love to share a little more about my life with you guys. If you're interested, so just let me know down below. So you guys are gonna see how thick I have made this nail by mistake, trying to fix the apex area. And honestly, there was nothing that I could do at this moment. I just knew that once I started to shape it and follow it and stuff, that it was gonna look like 10 times better. So sometimes you just have to really trust your craft. Like I knew that I couldn't continuously apply acrylic to the nail, it was gonna get thicker and thicker, and it did. So you really just want to make sure that you're being cautious as you're working and like i said make sure that you're checking that apex area constantly so that you're not making the bottom of the nail in the apex area pretty much the same height If 
y'all see how close to the cuticle that is? Practice, I'm telling you guys. I remember when, oh my gosh, story time. I remember when I didn't know what an apex area was and I had messaged another nail tech pretty much asking like, hey, I'm having lifting and breaking and stuff. Like, what's the problem? And she was like, oh, your nails don't have an apex. And I'm like, a what? And she's like, yeah, I could tell from like the front of your nails that they probably don't have an apex. And I was super offended. Like, I actually wanted to argue with her. I'm not too sure if we did get into an argument regarding that because she was being so rude. We're super cool now. I know she remembers that, but, uh, you know, you have to love people. And honestly, I think she was just telling me, you know, the brutal truth. But I was pissed because I'm like, I don't even know what that is. But anyways. So now I'll be flushing the cuticle area and guys remember that this is a very important step because if this area is not flushed to the natural nail, you will experience lifting. So when you are filing debulking nails, anything in that category, you never want to use your file at a really fast speed because you never want to take too much acrylic off and then you have to go back and try to perfect the other side. So as you're doing this, make sure you're working on a very low speed as you're going from right to left. Also, I'm applying light pressure onto the nail as I'm doing this so I can properly control my nail bit. As I said, you don't want to be moving too fast and then you later have to go back and perfect the opposite side. So just take your time as you're doing this. Also, you know that your drill bit is going too slow if it's constantly stopping or breaking as you're trying to debulk and file the nails. After filing the nails, I am going to go over the nails one more time using my 80 grit hand file. I like to do this because it really does help me get any bumps that may be there that maybe I overlooked or didn't see completely out. Because as you're doing this, if it's uneven in that area, the nail will not turn white in that spot. So then you'll see that, of course, it's not as even as the rest. You can continue to file over the spot until it blends in with the rest of it. And of course, after this, I do have to go over the nail one more time with... A buffer like I said this is something that I personally like to do it's a little more time-consuming but I prefer to use my hand file sometimes Also, y'all got any ideas for the next YouTube video? I kind of got a few in mind, but you know, I'm open to all suggestions.
see right there, I was using my hand file to start to debulk the apex area because it was a little high before. And now I'm using my buffer to go over the nails to remove any scratches. And I actually got this buffer from the nail supply store that's near me. Um, I love the nail supply store that's near me. Actually, I think these buffers be like 12 cent each, 20 cent each or something like that. They're amazing. I love them. So now I'm creating my cow print designs and I'm using a regular old dotting tool. I know everybody got one because I have a thousand for some, whatever. Anyways, I do recommend using gel polish when you are doing any hand drawn designs because of course you can flash cure and keep it moving. I decided to use acrylic paint doing this. I'm not sure why, but you guys are going to see that I am randomly placing my colors onto the nails and I'm kind of... I'm not gonna say I'm moving slow when I'm doing this, but when I am applying my color onto the nail, I'm circling the dotting tool around so that I'm just evenly spreading out the polish. Well, this is acrylic paint, but if this was gel polish, that's pretty much what I do so I don't make it too thick. Y'all, this one time I did this girl nail, she had like, you know, the random French tips with the different designs and stuff. And I was new to like using gel paint and stuff like that. So I had made it too thick and it was like some of the designs were literally like sticking out of her nail. And when she came back for a fill and I was following the designs off, there was literally like liquid gel polish everywhere because the inside of the design did not cure. So also as you're doing this, you do want to make sure that whatever color you apply before is dry before you start to move on to your next color. So just take your time as you're doing this and don't think too hard about it. Like when I first did this set, I was thinking so hard about where to place the colors and it's not necessary. It's so random and they end up still being really pretty. I'm gonna make sure that this is zoomed in for you guys, of course, but you guys are just gonna constantly see me just placing the colors randomly, sparkling some dots here and there. Amazing. I think the first time I did this, I was trying to copy the picture exactly. And then halfway through this set, I had realized like, she probably did that at random. So like I said, don't overthink it. This is a real simple and cute design. And I was gonna do a shiny top coat over this, but the matte top coat was hitting.
so this is all that i have for y'all today y'all let me know how y'all feeling about these nails when i post the final product and also y'all follow me on instagram follow me on twitter tiktok i got all of that is gonna be in the link down below i really do appreciate the forty thousand, and i will soon be doing a 40k giveaway so like i said i really do appreciate all you guys for tuning in and down below let me know what y'all want to see next like give me some ideas i'm listening to all So if y'all did enjoy this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm going to see y'all next Sunday.